wrap. Go ahead, dude. Juuri parhaillaan on Floridassa Key Largon edustalla meren pohjassa käynnissä mielenkiintoinen avaruuslento. Tai siis melkein avaruuslento. Neljä miestä, noista kolme on astronautteja, on 20 metrin syvyydessä sijaitsevassa Aquarius-nimisessä merenalaisessa laboratoriossa ja simuloi siellä avaruuslentoa. Eräs näistä astronauteista on Euroopan avaruusjärjestön tanskalainen astronautti Andreas Mogensen ja tiedotuupi pääsi juttelemaan hänen kanssaan tänään aamulla Skypein kautta merten syvyyksiin. Ja tässä se, mitä Andreas meille kertoi. Well, so I'm sitting at our galley table. This is where we have a breakfast, lunch and dinner. And uh, we've got a fantastic porthole here next to the galley table where we can sit and look out at the uh, seafloor and all the fish that are swimming around our habitat. Yeah. Um, it's kind of dark, it's only a uh, quarter to eight in the morning, so the sun hasn't really penetrated that far, so we can't see that clearly at the moment, but I can see, if, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I can see a few fish around, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. What we see below us, uh, the, some of these are um, gas tanks for our air supply. Oh, right. Because we're in a, of course, in a pressurized habitat here. Um, that has all the necessary life support functions to keep us alive. Yeah. So it's in many ways it's a lot like an ISS module. Uh, I'd say it's about the size of a big school bus and we're six people. Um, this is the, the table with the, the porthole. And I, as I swing the camera around, we see the kitchen. Yeah. We see the doorway out to the entry porch. There's Randy, Hello. our commander. And then here we have all of the, uh, the, the systems for the habitat, so that includes the uh, the uh, air supply systems, the battery systems, the communication systems. And then around the corner here, we've got the entry to the bunk, uh, the bunk room where we have six bunk beds. Right. And then the other end, we have our uh, wet porch where we can go in and out of the water. Yeah, yeah so every day we go uh, for EVAs, for spacewalks, simulated spacewalks, where we don uh, a diving helmet and full diving gear. And then we uh, exit through Uh, our wet porch, which is in many ways, it's kind of like a cup that you put upside down, so the air pressure uh, from inside just holds the water out, and then we just exit through the bottom of the habitat. Well, we have a lot of different uh, objectives when we go for these simulated spacewalks. One is, of course, is to prepare for the future. So we uh, we simulate that we're going on spacewalks on asteroids where the uh, gravity is reduced. Uh, and we're, we're doing essentially mining operations. We're trying to take samples of the asteroid to bring back with us to the Earth for scientists to study. So we have uh, some very sophisticated core drilling uh, and other ways of gathering samples uh, to bring back with us. Um, and then we also are using this year a, a very uh, exciting rover that we can use to explore the seafloor with. So we, uh, we've got this underwater scooter that we used to uh, to explore in in a similar way that we would explore the surface of an asteroid one day hopefully uh, so really it's uh, to kind of to to find methods useful and efficient methods for uh, exploring the surfaces of asteroids and then also to test uh, the tools that uh, the engineers are currently developing for the future yeah and how about the scooter how how does it feel to drive it and how do you drive with that by the way well so you uh, You, you lie on top of it and yeah. you have uh, uh, controls much like in an airplane so you can roll it, you can bank it, uh, you can thrust up and down. Uh, it feels a little bit like James Bond. It's a fantastic scooter that has an inbuilt navigation system that uses uh, Doppler. Uh, it's a little bit similar to, uh, to GPS but below uh, the surface of the water. So we actually have uh, bearings, headings, we have an integrated map function so we can navigate to different sites underwater. It's, uh, it's very advanced and uh, really fun to play with. The really interesting thing uh, for diving here from the Aquarius uh, habitat is that we are already at the same pressure as the water around us. Um, so yeah, there's no need to pre-breathe like in space, but there's also no need to get used to the pressure or to equalize your ears as you normally do when scuba diving. So we just we put on our uh, diving equipment, which instead of a normal scuba mask and regulator, it's actually a, a full diving helmet mm. so that we have integrated communication so that we can continuously talk with our crewmates inside the habitat who are guiding us through our simulated spacewalks. Uh, 
Yeah. And then we just uh, climb out through the bottom of the habitat. Because we are now fully saturated at two and a half atmospheres, which means that we have much more nitrogen in our blood than normal. Mm. And if we went to the surface now, uh, we would get a severe case of the bends, which could, is potentially lethal. Uh, so we are very focused on safety uh, and on following the, the right protocols, exactly like you would be on a, on a real spacewalk in space. Um, and then at the end of the mission, after a week, we'll need to go through a, a long 16-hour uh, decompression uh, cycle where we slowly uh, re lower the pressure back to surface over a 16-hour period. And only at that point uh, will the nitrogen in our blood have been ha reduced to the point where we can safely exit the habitat and return to the surface. It's, uh, it's a very interesting world down here um, with, the, with the higher pressure. I don't know if you can tell, but... Uh, my, at least to, to me and my crewmates, my voice sounds a little bit differently than normal, and that's because the higher pressure is exerting a different force on my vocal cords, so my voice changes. That's something that we've all found. Um, in fact, when yeah. you say now, it's a little bit different, indeed, yeah. Yeah, and of course, we, all, we also brought some, uh, as you can see this, we brought some ping pong balls down with us, and you can see how the two and a half atmospheres has just completely compressed the, the ping pong ball. Yeah, so we're indeed. very... Interested to see when we go back to the surface if it uh, pops back out again and becomes round. Well, it's it's organized very much like uh, on board the space station. So we have a, a daily time plan that's uh, coordinated with the mission control center up on the surface, and they provide us this daily timeline that's uh, divided into 10 or 15 minute uh, blocks of time. So everything that we're uh, scheduled to do is is on our timeline. Uh, we usually get up at about uh, well, between six, quarter past six, we have our, uh, our breakfast, get ready to go. And then, well, the rest of the day, it, it depends on what activities they have scheduled. So some of us are always on spacewalks, which means that the other crew members inside are helping them through the radio communications. Uh, we have maintenance tasks uh, on board the habitat. We have to change out different filters. Uh, for example, carbon dioxide scrubbers need to be filtered. We have uh, sanitation tanks that need to be purged and so on. And then we also do uh, some science, exactly like they do on board. Um, for example, yesterday I had, a, I had an uh, EVA in the afternoon, but in the morning I had an ESA experiment, uh, which is actually a very, very interesting uh, experiment because it's something that I'm going to do on my mission to the space station yeah. next year in September. So we're actually using this NEMO mission to test some of the uh, technology that I'll be using in space. So from ESA's point of view, this is a, a, an excellent oppor opportunity to, to test some of that technology. And it's uh, some very interesting technology. It's a, a heads-up display integrated with smartphone and tablet that will allow real-time communication between the astronauts and mission control. So really, it's a, a mix of... Uh, daily science and technology operations uh, coupled together with uh, spacewalks or simulated spacewalks. Indeed, indeed. Uh, what, we are, what are you going to do right after this? Go on with the breakfast? No, so we've uh, finished all the uh, activities in the morning, all our preparations. We've had our uh, briefs, we've had our breakfast. Uh, and we're, as soon as I'm done talking to you, I'll get suited up for my uh, first uh, simulated spacewalk of the, of the day. So Randy, our commander, and I are going out for four hours to do a uh, simulated surface exploration of, uh, of an asteroid this morning. So we're going to be using this underwater scooter. It's called a divery delivery system. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, lots of different sites on the seafloor that we're going to be uh, exploring and navigating to using the, the divery delivery system and this integrated a navigation system on board. So it's going to be a, a really interesting day today, uh, packed with activities. So the whole, yeah, the whole morning will be taken up, and I think we'll be back inside the habitat and again at uh, uh, at one one p.m. So about uh, four or five hours from now, I'll be and back. And you dive after that again? You said that this will be your first uh, EVI today, no? Yeah. So uh, tonight, uh, I'm lucky enough that I'll also be part of a night dive. So. Uh, yeah, sometime tonight when the sun's gone down and it's pitch black outside, we'll be going outside again for just a, a one-hour uh, shorter simulated spacewalk. So that should be... Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that because we get to see some uh, fantastic fish and some fantastic nightlife that comes out when, uh, when the sun goes down. Yeah, I, I, I see really that you are having horrible time over there, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tough life. <laughs>